Good evening. What a beautiful gathering of folks. It's a real joy to be with you. I am uh, the second string, as they say. Um, I bring warm greetings from Margie File and the Catholic worker community here in South Bend. Margie um, is not able to be with us this evening, but she asked me to share with you a little bit about the Catholic worker here in South Bend. Um, I wonder if anyone in the room is already kind of familiar-ish with Dorothy Day, Peter Moore, and the Catholic worker movement. Great, great, um, wonderful. Um, I just want to give you a brief overview. What is the Catholic worker the, in the short version? Um, what the Catholic worker looks like here in South Bend and a little bit about um, why it's been important to me. Um, I just got married um, a few weeks ago. Um, and thank you. Thank you. This is my lovely spouse in the photo, um, Jonathan. And um, in the past couple weeks, I've been reading a book that was really significant for John in his early formation um, in high school and early college called The Irresistible Revolution by Shane Claiborne. Are you all familiar with this book? Um, and um, in the book, Shane Claiborne um, kind of begins by saying, um, if you asked what Christians believe, we could easily tell you perhaps what that is that we believe that Jesus um, was born, um, died, and rose again. But when you ask Christians, how do you live, um, some of us might scratch our heads. And that was certainly true for me um, as, an, as an early teenager um, and kind of in my formative years in there in my 20s or so. And, and that question, how do Christians live, um, really became alive for me when I met the Catholic worker community here in South Bend. I was 15, it was 2005 or so, and I met a community of folks who said, you know what, we take it really seriously when in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 25, Jesus says, when you give food to the hungry, when you give drink to the thirsty, when you clothe the naked, when you visit the sick, when you bury the dead, when you do these things, you're actually doing it to me. You're not just kind of doing it to me or remembering me-ish, you're actually doing it to me. And also when you don't do those things, you're not doing it to me. When I was 15, I walked through the doors of the women's house of hospitality of uh, the Catholic worker here in <coughs> South Bend. And um, I was invited to help make dinner uh, at the house of hospitality. And my job was to make hummus. I'd never eaten hummus before. Um, this was a new thing for me, tahini, garbanzo beans, uh, cumin, the whole nine yards. Um, and it was a big pot of hummus because we were feeding a lot of folks. We were feeding whoever showed up, really. Um, it could be folks from, uh, from St. Mary's College, from Notre Dame, from, um, from South Bend, from the neighbors next door. Anyone could come. And my job was to make hummus. Um, turns out my fumbly 15-year-old hands dumped the entire bowl of hummus on the floor. Um, the, just the whole thing pouring down. Um, and quickly, as quickly as I had dropped it, a whole flock of people gathered around the hummus bowl, scooped it up gingerly, except, okay, um, no pun intended, um, and put it back in the bowl and served it. And I thought, boy, we are not in Kansas anymore. Um, <laughs> My family is not like a five-second rule family, neither were we, uh, um, uh, you know, connoisseurs of hummus. Um, but but there's something about this gathering of folks that um, said all are welcome to sit at this table and share in this meal together that really stretched my imagination about what it looks like to live a Christian life. Um, that anyone was welcome to gather here to share this meal together. And that in breaking bread together, we were breaking bread with Jesus who is risen and lives among us and is calling us to be drawn into deeper kinship with one another. The Catholic worker community or movement was founded around 1933 by Dorothy Day um, and Peter Morin in the height of the Great Depression. And um, they were noticing that there were, there were many folks who were unemployed without work um, without food, without, uh, without shelter, um, and, and that many folks ended up um, without these basic necessities and without anywhere to turn. And they said, gosh, 
Jesus said when you give food to the hungry, when you clothe the naked, when you, when you give shelter to those who, who don't have it, that, that you're actually doing it to me. So why don't we break open what they call the dynamite of the church, the social teachings of the Christian community, and say, let's live this. Peter Morin, um, who wrote in little essays, little short, little prose poems kind of things um, that he would call easy essays, he said, the scholars of the church have taken up this dynamite, the social teachings of the gospel, have wrapped it in nice phraseology, put it in a box, and sat on the lid. Um, the time has come to blow the dynamite of the church, to make this message dynamic and to live it, to actually take personal responsibility to live what Jesus calls us to in the gospels, um, particularly in, in um, the Sermon of the Mount and in Matthew 25. And the Catholic worker community tries and struggles and ch has challenges, in, but tries to live this, um, this gospel message and to encounter the risen Lord in the faces of one another, especially among the poor. Um, here in South Bend, we have two houses of hospitality um, across the street from one another, one for women and one for men, where folks live in community, folks who might otherwise be homeless um, or who are, are um, fleeing from difficult situations and can live together in community. Houses of hospitality. We also seek to clarify our thought together um, about pressing issues today. We might have a round table discussion on, on Pope Francis's encyclical Laudato Si and the call to care for our common home, to talk about food insecurity in our city and responses to it with urban agriculture, to talk about the sins of racism that continue to plague our communities, um, talk about important pressing issues and how we respond as followers of Jesus. Um, houses of hospitality, clarification of thought, um, and Peter Morin would also say that um, forming communities in, uh, on the land was an, another important part of the Catholic worker movement. I encourage you to read Dorothy Day's autobiography, The Long Loneliness, and also her writings to get a little bit more of the, um, the kind of uh, philosophy, theology behind the Catholic worker movement. Um, but if there are worker communities in your cities, wherever you're from, I encourage you to go and, and sit down and knock on the door. They will hopefully let you in. <laughs> um, you're certainly welcome to join us at the Catholic worker here in South Bend during your stay here. We have a drop-in center for um, folks who would like to share a cup of coffee or a warm breakfast tomorrow morning as well as Sunday morning from about 8 to 10 or noon um, until about noon tomorrow until about 10 on Sunday. So you're very welcome to come. Um, also at Our Lady of the Road, we have a food cooperative um, that has market nights um, every couple weeks or so. Um, we live in a food desert, so we try to create spaces for um, farmers and to sell their produce and for folks to have access to good, organic, local, fresh food. Um, we have a wood shop um, where young people from our neighborhood can come and learn um, woodworking. Um, we also just started making caskets there. So for folks who can't afford to, to um, buy a coffin or casket, um, can, can come and can be, have a, a dignified um, burial in that way. So that's a really beautiful ministry that just got started up. We also have a brand new chapel that was blessed um, about two years ago, and we have mass there every Wednesday. We also have um, ecumenical prayer, Teze style prayer, to ground the practice of the corporal works of mercy in prayer and in the spiritual works of mercy too. Um, so that's another really beautiful spot, the Chapel of the Holy Spirit that you'd get to visit if you came by as well. Um, there's much, much more that I could say, but um, for me, the Catholic worker, meeting the Catholic worker as a as a young person and then continuing to, to grow with the worker. It's been really important in John's and my relationship um, and continues to be the reason why we remain in South Bend. Um, for me, it stretched my imagination about what it looks like to take Jesus seriously in the Gospels and to seek him, to seek deep relationship with Jesus and with God's people, um, to call us into relationships of justice um, for the common good, um, and to pray that we might all be one. Um, 
on earth and in heaven. So just a little snippet. I really encourage you to read Dorothy's writing, Peter's writing. Um, and if you have any questions about the Catholic worker community here in South Bend, Father Paul Coleman and others have my contact information. So I'd be happy to speak with you further. Thanks so much. Thank you.